You know, every October we tend to focus on fire prevention and fire safety. At the schools, the fire departments will go and visit the kids and talk about all the things that they should know. But at home, you should be doing a few things as well, including testing the smoke detectors and the carbon monoxide detectors and maybe even replacing them if they've expired. Yes, they do expire. What many people don't know is that the life of a smoke or carbon monoxide detector is 10 years. Over time, the components get dusty and dirty, or they just stop working in general. Today's smoke alarms are more technologically advanced to respond to a multitude of fire conditions and also mitigate false alarms. Now I'm replacing the smoke detectors in the bedrooms with Kida 10-year worry-free smoke detectors. There's a sealed battery in here that will last up to 10 years. I'm also installing a new 10-year worry-free combination smoke and carbon monoxide detector in the living room. These 10-year worry-free alarms are great because they activate once you attach them to the mounting plate. You'll hear the chirp and then you can push the test button to confirm that it's working. I'm replacing the carbon monoxide detector with a Kita carbon monoxide alarm that has a digital readout so I or emergency responders can see how many parts per million of carbon monoxide are present in the air. This device requires three AA batteries and I'll be changing those batteries every six months. These devices have a date of manufacture on them and it's important for you to write in the expiration date so you'll know exactly when it's time to replace them. And even though these devices are 10 year worry free, it doesn't mean you should just ignore them. You should be testing them every month to make sure that they're still functioning and working properly. Now, as far as the rest of the fire safety stuff, you all know the deal. If your clothes catch fire, stop, drop, and roll. If you hear the smoke alarms or you see smoke, get out of the house right away and make sure that you have a plan. Two separate ways to get out of the house and a place to meet up so you can make sure everybody is safe and accounted for. Then you call 911. If you need help trying to figure out what type of devices you should put where, the NFPA has a lot of great resources on their website, nfpa.org. And you can also call your local fire department and ask for the fire prevention officer or duty chief or whoever is in charge. They will be more than happy to help get you pointed in the right direction so you can stay safe at your home. Good.